In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at the multiple regression tools in Excel to uh, create a model to predict the selling price of homes. We're using a database from rather ancient now, 1997, all the homes that were sold in Roseville, Minnesota that year. It's around 250 some homes in this database. The selling price is in column A, number of bedrooms in the home, number of bathrooms in the home, the finished square feet. This is actually a range from smallest to largest in this database. The age of the home at the time of sale in 1997, and then the style of the home, which um, we'll actually ignore for the multiple regression part. Multiple regression would require that we code this as a number so that we can use it into the equation. To bring in the multiple regression tools, we need the analysis tool pack. Different versions of Office have this uh, loaded in in different ways. I'm using Office 2007. In your version of Office, look for Excel options, add-ins, so that you can get to the analysis tool pack, analysis tool pack VBA. I've already loaded it, and if I go to data on the ribbon, to the far right I'll have data analysis and regression. And in this tool, like many tools, there are just a few things you have to select. The Y range is what you're trying to predict, which for us, of course, is the selling price. So I'm going to go to column A, click and hold, and go all the way down, and highlight all the selling prices for the homes in Roseville that were sold that year. As I said, there's around 200 in 50 of these homes. And that will be my predictor. Input X range. We'll go to the spreadsheet. Let's go up to the top. I'm going to use bedrooms, bathrooms, finished square feet, and age as my variables that we're going to use as predictors that will predict the selling price of the home. Now, as we're doing this, you'll notice that um, uh, two things. We have to have the predictors in Excel in columns next to each other, and I've arranged that already. But also, you should say to yourself, that doesn't seem like enough. There ought to be other variables that predict selling price. Location, for one, is what everyone says. Condition of the home. So many other variables than just these four. And as you'll see, that means this model that we're going to create is really quite inadequate. By the way, since I highlighted the names at the top, I'm going to click on this box for labels. So I have my Y value, in other words, what I want to predict. The four X predictor variables. I made sure I did labels. And now I'm just going to click on the output range. Click in the input box for that to the right and have the output place someplace uh, in the spreadsheet, uh, let's say right about here, would be fine. And now I'm just going to tell it what I want to see. At the moment, I'm not interested in plots, so I'm not going to choose any residual plots. I'm just going to select residuals, and that will be the difference between what actually occurred, the selling price in Part A, in Column A, and what the model predicts. Clicking on OK will produce the multiple regression analysis. Now let's take a quick look at this. There's so many things to pay attention to here. The multiple R and R squared at the top are things we should highlight. Um, multiple R or R squared is basically telling us that 60% of the variability in selling price is due to the variability in these four variables. Let's take a look at the residuals first. Uh, first thing I want to do is change them into dollars so that you can see for a minute um, how they're going to look. Go on the home, dollars, and pay real close attention to the residuals. It is telling us that they predicted a selling price of $60,700 for the first home, and it was wrong by $54,000. That's a terrible residual. It means we're in error by that amount. Notice that here we're very, very close. But that's telling us right away that this model is not doing a good job at all. 
the coefficients column tells us exactly what we want for our uh, coefficients of our uh, regression equation, our multiple regression equation, linear regression equation. Uh, for instance, it tells us that the age has a negative coefficient or negative slope which makes sense. As a home gets older, you'd expect it would sell for less. This is saying about $1,400 less for each additional age. For finished square feet, there's a $65 increase for each additional square foot. It should surprise you, it better surprise you, that for bedrooms the coefficient is negative. That means that for each additional bedroom, the selling price decreases by around $6,300. That, of course, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But you notice that we have a positive on the finished square feet. And this is um, very typical when you have variables that are predictor variables that are correlated. Um, as you add a bedroom, you automatically would add finished square feet. And therefore, some of the uh, additional selling price that's included for adding a bedroom is included down here in the finished square feet. Those kinds of internal uh, correlations are difficult to manage. It means you can't look at these coefficients very strongly. I'd like to draw your attention to the p-values over in this column. They are um, estimates of the chance that the actual coefficient could be zero. In other words, what it's saying is this. If you declare that the coefficient is not zero, in fact for bathrooms it is $3,400, instead of zero, um, there's a 43, almost 44 percent chance you're incorrect in stating that it's going to be not zero. That's a rather large chance that it could be uh, incorrect. I mean, if you look at the next column, the confidence interval for that coefficient is anywhere from negative to positive, which includes zero. Which means, for all we know, this coefficient for bathrooms could be zero. And that's what this high p-value is trying to tell us. What we really should do is redo the analysis and leave out the, the number of bathrooms. So we'll do this. We'll First of all, make a copy of the spreadsheet. I see no reason to change the name. I'm going to kind of wipe out the data we've already created, the analysis we've already had done, by just erasing those columns or deleting them. And I want to redo this analysis, but leaving out the number of bathrooms. So I'm going to take out that entire column of bathrooms. This is often called... Um, backwards elimination. You looked at the highest p-value and said, let's eliminate that variable. It uh, has a really large p-value. Chance it uh, could be zero is quite high. Let's take it out. So let's redo the regression. Data. Data analysis. Regression. Input range is, notice highlighted the same. The input x range is going to have to change. So let's highlight that. Highlight just Bedrooms, finished square feet, and age. Output range can still be I4. Res residuals is all I'm going to ask for. That's how quick and easy it is to do that entire analysis. Excel does make it very, very fast. Let's put some dollar figures on that again. The residuals are still quite high. Notice the p-values again. We now have a p-value of uh, more than 16% for the number of bedrooms. A reasonable person would say you should probably take that uh, variable out and redo the analysis one more time. That would be one more step in the backwards elimination. So let's do that. Move or copy. Let's move, create a copy of the spreadsheet. We'll leave it as data 3. It was bedrooms that had the highest p-value, so I'm just going to click on that and eliminate that. I think I'll eliminate our analysis from the previous step by deleting those columns. And let's just redo the analysis very quickly. Data, data analysis, regression. 
input Y range is still correct. The X range is going to have to change, so I'm going to highlight that. Finney square feet and age is all I'm going to include. Only two predictors now. Output range can remain where it is. Residuals is all I really wanted to see. You notice that all the p-values are actually quite small. Uh, that e to the negative 08 means 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8, or 0.7014. Very, very small chance that the coefficient could be 0. And notice the confidence interval stretches from about 51,000 to 104,000 for this coefficient. That's the intercept, actually, of our multiple regression equation. Residuals are still quite large, but we weren't expecting, with only two predictor variables, to be able to predict selling price very strongly for a home. And you can see there are some really large residuals. By the way, notice that this model is saying this. If you know the age of a home, you should multiply by about negative 1,400. In other words, the age goes, sorry, the selling price goes down by about $1,400 for each age that the home is, each year that the home is old. Multiply the finished square feet by almost $64.60. Um, let's just call that $65 for each finished square feet. Add around $77,910, and that will predict the selling price of the home. But keep in mind, that is really a poor model. It predicts a selling price of just $58,000 for a home and is wrong by about $56,000. That's our first home, and if we take a look, it actually sold for $114,900. Well, we weren't expecting these variables to actually give us a good prediction, but that's how easy it is to do a multiple regression in Excel. If we want to include things like style, we'd have to put in a code uh, for 1.5 story. It could be some sort of number, say 1.5 even. We'd have to come up with some sort of codes for different things, four-level split, a three-level split. What do we mean by Rambler? What sort of code should we put in there? We'll try a neural net uh, program in a moment, which will allow us to include these variables without actually creating a code. That'll be in the next video.